The discus tank is going absolutely great and many of you would have actually seen recently I put in the sink list. All eight of them are still there, they're not touching these discus, not a chance. I mean, look at the size of them. They don't go anywhere near them, so we're completely safe there. Someone mentioned something about at night time they like to try and suck on a discus, but I also read that discus like to hunt at night, so <laughs> good luck to the autos if we're gonna try that one. And this here is the wood that I got from Aquarium Gardens that you saw in the last vlog. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's sat there looking cool in the corner. It's absolutely huge, so I'm going to need a new tank for it. And luckily I've got the second room coming, so four foot tank looping out. Oh, that'll look awesome. I have heard from many people that you need to let it sort of soak for a good three weeks or so in your tank before you put any fish in because it could be dangerous to them. And then I've also got this massive bowl. My wife was out shopping. She saw it in a shop and was like, how big is your bowl that you usually use? Well, that's the one she's talking about. That's the one that you've seen in plenty of other videos. And now I've got this massive one to, to escape. I can't wait to. Look at the size of it. I can get my head in there. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> in the Asian fish aquarium, more Asian fish coming soon, guys. But in there, I put three Siamese algae eaters, and they're doing a fantastic job at keeping this whole thing sparkly clean. So I've got three more in this bag that I'm going to put into the discus aquarium just to just give an extra little bit, just to just, <laughs> just to give an extra little boost and clean up some of those grotty looking Java ferns we see there. Already got the autosinclus, they're doing really well. All good so far to discus and i know that sami's algae eaters are really good with discus as well some people have mentioned about the slime coats attaching i've never ever seen it and i've had discus in my other aquarium with both the autosynclus and sami's algae eaters for nearly two years now so in my opinion we're all good but we need to temperature acclimate them first and turn off that light so they're not scared So the Siamese algae has now been temperature acclimating for half an hour. Oh, and if you want to know how we do behind the scenes, I've just added all the neon textures, which you would have seen that video for now. If you haven't, go take a look. This build here, the black water. This is how we stop reflections. <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. But anyway, back to the case in hand, which is the Siamese algae eaters. Let's get those into the tank. The Siamese algae eaters are just chilling in that net. What I'm going to do now is feed the discus so they're distracted and then they, they can just swim whenever they want then when they go in with no fear of attack. And now I'm gonna turn the lights back off again as well, just to make sure they're chilling out for a little bit and getting comfortable with the tank. So the Siamese algae eaters have settled in nicely. They've not been eaten. Fish aren't interested in them at all, but look how good they look there. Oh, look at them queuing up. Feed us, you've already been fed. <laughs> I've also just added some bacteria to this tank and also the neon textures, which are looking really cool. Slight murkiness to the water, not the tint, the murkiness, like the white murkiness. That's all gonna be gotten rid of in a few days. That'll, that'll clear up nicely. But you know what? I am getting really, really tired of losing all my tools, towels, anything I wanna use to do any maintenance at any given time is never where I left it. So I've come up with a solution. So there's one thing that you never ever want to do and that is skip on your aquarium maintenance. I've done it before and it comes back to bite you in your behind. So for instance, right now, the pond tank that I've got here all built a while back is settling in really, really well, but it's right on the brink of where you want to actually do some maintenance on it. So if you look down at the bottom here, right by where this quarry is, 
peppercorry this is. You can see just the sort of starting of algae starting to form there, some detritus build up and everything. And in this corner here on the glass, there's some, some more algae. I think that's just where we've got the light coming from here and we've got the light coming from this aquarium. But you know, this is the limit. That's what I'm saying. You don't want it to get any worse than this because it then starts to become a real problem. Before you know it, you're completely overrun and then you're tempted to break it down and start again. So staying on top of your aquarium, this is really really key and look at this this moss now is really starting to grow in lovely nice and thick remember i put it when i built this i put the moss onto the rock and tied it in cotton and it looks a bit odd to start with but you know look a few weeks in and it's already looking great look at these look at these guppies enders sorry look at that ender there that one right in the middle that's my snake snake skin one i bred that one from a baby and that's my absolute favorite i love it stay still stay still <laughs> So when I'm doing maintenance, I like to leave the filter on because it just keeps that water flow moving and any anything you're wiping off is going up into the water column and staying up there. If you turn the filter off and the flow off, it's just gonna settle down and then you know you might miss it when you're changing the water. But if you get, get straight on with cleaning at the same time as siphoning out the amount that you're gonna take out, it should go out with that water. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Oh yes, pause this maintenance session because I've just found, oh, where are they gone? I found more babies, look, you see? Okay, so look there, see, there's there's one baby on the right there, just gone, and in that top corner there, look, we're picking up another extra, extra tiny new baby. If there's one, there's always more. Oh, yeah, there's another one. Hey, yes, more Endless, brilliant, I love Endless. Endless are actually quite expensive to buy, so if you can like get a good breeding amount yourself, you can possibly sell them back to shops or even swap them out for other fish because it's very easy for shops to sell these. So if you can use them as currency because they'll gladly take them off your hands and let you buy something else if you've got more tanks. I mean, don't hold me to that, but <laughs> if I was owning a store, that's what I would do anyway. Everyone likes Ender Guppies. So everything is coming along really well and we're just getting started because after I've finished filming this and editing this, which I'll do right after you, you finish, <laughs> I'm making a start on the second room. I've got the second room, I've got racking, I've got tanks, I've got light, yeah I've got lights, <laughs> I've got paint, all of that ready to go on there straight away. So I am so looking forward to that. There is tons more stuff coming up, coming your way, coming my way, coming everyone's way. So click that subscribe, ding the bell, it's gonna be good.